probably everybody should receive a notification that we are currently online. Okay, so, uh, so today is the first lecture and the course is supposed to be is about affine quantum groups, but uh, we, I start from the some review about just uh, not affine, uh, ordinary fine quantum groups, which correspond to finite dimensionals, uh, simply algebra, simple or semi-simple. And as I said, I actually suppose that you have some knowledge about this story. So my, uh, our last year course, it is more than enough, uh, but any others, there are many other sources, but today just somehow run away or many facts that we will need uh, without motivations, without maybe some explanation, but with problems. Uh, I, as I suppose the course will be supplied by many problems, many, I mean, more or less three or four for each lecture. And this year I'll try to, to, to make, to, I don't know, to help everybody to be in, in good shape. So I, in any lecture, I will try to give one problem, which is some, some sort of urgent. So this problem should be solved uh, before the next lecture. So it will be one problem, which is just for the next lecture, and maybe the next or two, maybe two better. So, to, so for example, today is 13th, and to the next, which will be 27th September, you, it's supposed that people solve this problem, or they will not solve it. So you have some, some time limit. And there will be some other problems too. Okay. Uh, uh, so today I have prepared slides, but probably I will also write somewhere here. Uh, when, I say, when people say about quantum groups, there are actually different notions, different objects. So the quantum, quantum group is not groups. It's a question, what do you quantize? You can quantize a group as a manifold in the sense that you can quantize the algebra and function of the group algebraic or any other sort of functions. Or you can quantize uh, dual objects, the universal enveloping algebra of the correspondingly algebra. And this is what we will actually study in the affine setting. So we will not talk about uh, quantum functions in the group. We will talk only about quantum to, uh, quantization of the universal envelopment, the, about the algebra UQ of G. Okay, let me fix some notation. So we have some simple early algebra, which correspond to some root system, which not by phi. We have some uh, set of simple roots. So we choose set of simple roots, which are denoted by alpha one, alpha r. So r is the rank. Uh, usually uh, we will assume that uh, for simplicity that everything is simply laced, or maybe another way to say that all roots have the same length. Uh, and this length is usually two. And there is a Cartan matrix, is a matrix which consists of scalar products of alpha i and alpha j. Uh, when people speak about this from the first time, they, this should be supplied about SLN story, uh, simple roots here, but I suppose everybody heard about this, so I omit. And uh, I go to the definition of the quantum group. The quantum group is a, an, a, a Algebra, associative algebra, and actually Hopf algebra, uh, which has algebraic generators uh, denoted by EI, FI, KI, KI inverse, where I runs from one to R, or one can say that these uh, generators correspond to the simple roots in our system. Uh, if algebra is not simple laced, then we should use not just Q, but some Sometimes it will be not Q, but Q squared and stuff like that. Uh, uh, so you see that if all length of any root is equal to two, then this QI is always Q and you can ignore the syntax. So of course I encourage you to ignore it. Uh, so what is the structure of the algebra? So we uh, case are form a commutative algebra. This is some sort of quantum torus. Q, I, Q, and inverse, you see like that. Uh, commutation relation between K uh, and uh, K and 
E uh, like this. And also, uh, I already see that I forgot the commutation relation between E and Fs. It is standard commutation ER and FJ is equal to, let me move on, delta, sorry, delta IJ, KI minus KI inverse, Q minus Q inverse. Okay, like this. And this is also quadratic relation. So, so this is a uh, case commute, uh, case uh, X on E by an adjoint minor. E between themselves uh, different uh, commutes and uh, corresponding gives us K. And there are most uh, non-trivial relations, uh, which are ser relations. Uh, if corresponding AIJ is zero, so the corresponding roots are orthogonal. Then here we have summation from zero to one. And if one look uh, carefully, then you see that this relation says that corresponding E generators commute, E commutator of EI and EJ is equal to zero. Ah, and probably here, everybody is clear for everybody, should, should be not E, but F. Okay. So we have several relations for E's and uh, we have the, the same, just replacement E to F, serial relation for F's. And uh, if AJ is equal to minus one, as we have in simple least case, then this is a cubic relation. And principle for non simple case, it is relation with higher degree. Uh, as I said, this is a whole factor, so there is a coproduct. Uh, uh, for the coproduct, actually, there are like different conventions, and uh, I hope that I will stay on this convention. So when I say different, so it could be, for example, here is one, but here ki, and similar replacement here. Or there are other choices, so I pick some, but up to you, of course. If you look at the literature, it can, so this convention agrees with Charlie Presley, but not agrees with Janssen book and many other books. Okay, and uh, and standard story for the whole algebra, we should have a co-unit, we should have antipod, and they are given by precise formulas. Uh, are there any questions about what I just said? I want to say that, uh, uh, okay, so uh, this co-unity antipod is uh, probably good to remember that this is not uh, part, uh, this is here part of the definition, but actually, how to say, the properties that they exist. So they are uniquely defined by the co-product. Of course, it's just for, for, for co-unity is uh, almost obvious because we know that the unit, if it is exist, it is unique. And for co unit is the same, and for antipod it is a bit more tricky, but also can be argued. So properties that such objects exist. These formulas can be deduced just. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, I will uh, write formulas like this k lambda for uh, not ki, but uh, uh, with some index lambda, and lambda uh, here it belongs to the root lattice. So for any, if you take any combination of, of i, then I can uh, consider the corresponding element. So about, so about case, you can think that this uh, uh, group, group algebra, which correspond to the root lattice. In principle, sometimes we need not root lattice, but uh, some small lattice like weight lattice and so on. So in formulas, it will mean that we'll have not just products of k's, but some roots of k. Oops. So be aware that at some points, okay. I, I will not be very careful about such 
stuff where we have root like red, but just be aware that at some point this numbers and I could, could be not integers, but summation. Okay. Uh, as I said, I don't have plan to talk about their relation, about their motivation, but just for not to stay a bit, uh, I say that uh, one of the way to think about their relations and standard story is that this relation that we can take any generator, any generator AG and apply to its adjoint action of the NAS generator AI, EI, this number of times. So for example, if AJ is zero, then they just compute. If AJ is minus one, then double commutator is zero and so on. And here the story is the same, but uh, about, uh, instead of this commutator, you should redefine commutator because you have some cues and coefficients. And there are different ways to do this actually. So one way is to say that uh, we have this operator at Q which is uh, defined by the following formula, x y minus q in power lambda mu, where lambda mu are weights of the corresponding elements. So I assume that each ei has weight alpha i, and each product of them, ei times ej, have a weight alpha i and alpha j, and then it is an exercise to check that indeed uh, the separation gives you Another way to think is to define a joint action of the quantum group on itself. I forgot, maybe I'll do it in later in the slide and we definitely did it last year. Uh, so uh, uh, just another way to say. Okay, uh, before we move to the ne next theme, maybe I should recall that uh, as, an L, as a vector, space, this algebra uh, has a triangular decomposition. So it's about generated by F, by K, and by E. In principle, this, this, this is serum to prove, but I will not do this. This is not actually the same as PBV uh, theorem, this is somehow part of the PBV theorem, but not difficult part. So difficult part is uh, to find some analogs of the Lie algebra generator in U plus and U minus. And we will discuss it later. Here, just assume it is more easy. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Mm. Okay. I have actually, maybe not question, but maybe. Uh, I mean, uh, if you want to receive some emails about my course, please write your email into the chat. And I will say, theoretically speaking, I can find emails of the people in Zoom, but maybe you don't want to receive. So please write your emails in the chat and I will send you, I don't know, some, some notification, for example, if some lecture will not, will not have lecture someday then. I will send to so, those. Мы уже в любом случае надо отправить, если уже как бы вы мне что-то отправляли, все равно отправить. Чтобы было удобно. I mean, Наверное, да. I think so, yes. If you believe that I already have your mail, it doesn't matter. I don't know, who knows. Maybe you, this is the last day. Вы уже не верите в мои лекции, все, значит, завтра у нас. Окей. We stopped for a moment, for several moments. And then I have many emails in the chat, so I, the problem is not to lose them. Okay. Uh, the next topic which I'm going to recall uh, is about uh, universal R matrix. So existence of the universal R matrix is a maybe a crucial property of the quantum groups and uh, it can be argued that this is more, this was an initial object, not not quantum group itself, but the matrix was an initial object. And there are still some stories where we have some sort of, maybe we don't have a description of the quantum groups in terms of generators from relation, but we have some matrix, some information about the matrix. 
and this is already good. Uh, but, uh, and I somehow not, not following the story history. I start from uh, from the universal matrix, and uh, actually I start from the universal matrix with which, uh, not with the uh, general object, but with the formula for this case. Um, and the formula is here. But um, before I write it, I need to recall some facts. So first of all, I need to have to recall the Drinfield theorem, which says the rings exist of the bi-algebra pairing between u greater than uh, zero and u less than equal to zero. Let me recall that the subalgebra u greater than equal to zero is a subalgebra generated by case and e's, and this is subalgebra generated by case and f's. Now, what do I mean by by algebra pairing? Algebra pairing is a pairing which uh, satisfies these two properties. So we have, if we have pairing with the element and the, and the product, then we, so here we have uh, apply coproduct and here we have, uh, and we apply just tensor mod. Uh, so another way to say is the following. So we have uh, two, bio, uh, we have a bi-algebra. So it means that we have a product and on the dual space, we also have a product. Assume or that, I mean, we ignore some problems with the dual for infinite dimensional spaces, assume that everything is somehow fixed. And uh, so the existence of this pair is, means the existence of the isomorphism between this algebra and dual by algebra to this. This, but there is also one slight issue where we not just take dual, but we also take opposite as a product or coproduct. So you he, see here is some difference. Here when I pair X with Y, Y prime, I wrote first Y prime, then Y. It means that I make some maybe delta opposite here. For, for example, I can, and for X's, I don't change all. I don't have any any sort of explanation why we should make one op one thing opposite, but this is a story. And so the trivial theorem that for this subalgebras are dual to each other. It's uh, classical. It means that we, if we start leap by uh, maybe you know, I mean some people know that, there is, that uh, quantum groups uh, the quantization of the sum structure which is called Lie by algebra, and classically in terms of Lie by algebra, this is a statement that uh, uh, the standard structure by algebra structure of the Borel subalgebra is self-dual. Dual the algebra is B itself. This is not true for G, for example. For uh, so if you take just U, it is not self-dual. Dual to U is a Quantum group is the algebra of functions in quantum group, the algebra in which I promised to not talk on this course. So this is not true for G, but this is true for Braille and this is certainly non trivial. So for Q equal one, for example, we have universal enveloping algebra, which is not self dual because it is not, it is a uh, universal family algebra in sense co product is core commutative. But it is not commutative, so not trivial. Uh, here are also some properties for the parent. So this is states that the parent on the Cartan part is just the parent of the uh, on the uh, uh, lattice. Uh, this is uh, uh, Main part of these properties is that uh, this pairing agrees with the weight. So if we have pairing of elements of the different weight, it is zero. And if you pair elements of the same weight, so, uh, I mean, but to say opposite weight, so such that uh, the total weight of this thing is zero, then we get some number. And this is just a normalization. It's, I mean, this convenient normalization, which agrees somehow with normalization, which I wrote here, Q minus Q inverse. So here actually should be Q. I don't know what are the origin of these lines. Let me write here QIs. Uh, okay. This is a, 
this is the same normalization. So for example, if I replace EIs, multiply all EIs by this number, then everything will be okay and just we will have no this number in the relation. This, and sometimes we multiply AI by this number, you will see. Okay, so there exists such pairings, this integral theorem, which can be proven, but it takes you know, one hour or so. And the next theorem is that if we using this pairing, we can construct the sum element R, which belongs to U tensor U, or U plus, the, the, yes, U plus, the, U greater than equal tensor U less than equal which is this element actually belongs to some extension because uh, the sum can be uh, infinite, but anyway. Uh, this again, this element is a product of two. One of them deals with Cartan part and another deals with U plus and U minus. X and, and Y's are dual bases in U plus and U minus. Uh, when I talk about dual bases, uh, we have infinite dimensional spaces, so this issue here, but U plus and uh, U minus uh, have a decomposition with respect to weights. And for each given weight, say alpha i plus alpha j, the corresponding space is finite dimensional and we can speak about, take, take bases here and bases here. Only for U pluses. For U pluses, corresponding space are finite dimensional. For U greater than uh, nickel, they are infinite dimension due to Cartan. But I Cartan part dealt in the first factor. And the first factor we have in power H bar, uh, HI tensor HI, where HI is a dual base. So I'm gonna take, for example, one of them to be uh, simple roots, then another will be weights, fundamental weights. So this is explanation of what is the formula and the properties of the R are the following, that R uh, intertwines delta and delta opposite and uh, nicely works with Cooper. So this is a fundamental object and it actually it deserves I don't know, at least half an hour for the motivation, why it is good, why it is interesting. And then you should leave with it, but maybe I run, so I assume that you heard about this sometime, somewhere. Um, anyway, I prepared an example. So for SL2. So for SL2, uh, we have parent to, and, e, and F is a one over Q minus Q inverse. Uh, using uh, this property and can be shown that the pairing between F and power N and E and power N is this number. Mm. Uh, Q factorial, I don't know, maybe I will define the next slide. I will, defi I will define Q factorial somewhere or maybe I'll already define it here. Here is Q factorial. So Q number is the Q in power Q minus Q in power minus Q over this. And Q factorial is just a product of Q numbers. Okay, Q factorial is a standard function. And here I wrote the pairing between F and power N and E in power N. If F, it, F and power N and E in some other power, then the pairing will be zero because pairing respects the uh, grading uh, respects the weights. So uh, the formal for matrix looks like this. This is uh, a famous formula and one of the good exercise, which I'm not going to give this year, is to check that this is indeed our matrix. We should namely satisfy this property. And, uh, we have uh, usually have some factorization. Well, I denote one factor by R bar and another factor which correspond to H, I denote as R bar H. Uh, any questions?
I don't know. I can ask people in audience. Все хорошо? Все нормально? Хорошо. Окей. We are, you see, we are in mixed format. I hope we will, next time we'll be more, we'll have more people in audience, but of course it's up to you. Uh, okay. Uh, one of, I mean, the, the main property of the universal mass is that it can give us a solution of the young Baxter equation. So if we have two representations, Beta finite dimensional, but not necessary. Then we can apply the corresponding operators to this R matrix and get uh, now instead of R matrix as an element of the tensor product of U and U, you have a matrix which check operator which checks on the tensor product of two spaces, could be finite dimensional, say two dimensional spaces, and you have four times four matrix. And from the very definition, this R matrix uh, intertwines uh, two structures on uh, of the uh, model of a quantum group on the tensor product V and W. One of them is given by coproduct delta, and another is given by coproduct delta opposite. So since delta is not necessarily co-commutative, we have two two structures. The, we, the, so due to property of delta, the property of delta is the homomorphism. The tensor product is actually the model of the quantum group, but it, in principle, it can be the structure is not unique. So we can have another coproduct. The coproduct can be the it could be the many coproducts for the given algebra, which means so given any algebra can have many structures of the whole algebra, and actually we will see the story like this. I mean, we see it here, and we will see on fine setting. It is quite standard story. But, but another quite standard part of the story, at least for the uh, good quantum groups, that uh, this uh, the structures are different, but the models are actually isomorphic, with non-trivial isomorphism, and the non-trivial isomorphism is given by our matrix. There are two, I don't know, schools how to talk about our matrix. And uh, one can either think that our matrix uh, intertwines to action on the V tensor W, or intertwines to uh, V tensor W and W tensor V. So if you uh, compose this, this operator with the operator of permutation, permutation which just permutes the factors, uh, then uh, you get um, operator which is denoted by R tilde, which acts this way. It also is an intertwiner. Uh, both the matrix satisfy Young Baxter relation, but they have a bit different form, different indices. So here you have the product of the uh, simple uh, reflection, and here you have product of other reflection. Uh, the, this property uh, means that if you have three space, v1, v2, v3, uh, then you have di you have different structure of the uh, module on here and different isomorphisms and uh, some composition has some sort so of hexagon, which is trivial. And this property follows uh, this this Young-Box relation. Maybe I should write it in just sense how to not, not to write. Mm. Okay, I have some problem with writing. One on what amp? Maybe. Oh. Okay, I don't know how to resolve it, but maybe this top young box. This young Baxter. And this young Baxter uh, shouldn't be assumed. So we don't necessarily assume it follows from this relation. 
So when people start to think about this, this is so that a young box is a most fundamental relation. This is true, but Greenfield observed that using the language of Hopf algebra, so, so this properties, uh, young box relation becomes a corollary. Okay, and I have a problem if you want to, I mean, to recall all these notions and stuff like that, then you can do computation for the next material case is SL3. Here's three ABC. А yes. во второй, во второй строчке Янга Бакстера там почему-то не участвует 1, 3. Index. Yes, this is how it should be, yes. Okay. But, so here we have only simple reflection, reflection which permutes neighbors. We, have, we, we do a long permutation using the simple reflection. There are two ways to do this. А, это соотношение кос, да? Yes, this is a bright relation, exactly. Everybody is welcome to ask questions in English and Russian, principle, Ukrainian, Italian. I don't know. In any way that I have a chance to understand the question. Okay, so now problem. We have problem. So first problem is compute this part R bar. R bar is a is a part which corresponds to u plus u minus, which do not contain Cartan part. And uh, I don't think this is, so actually maybe, I don't know, is it possible to write the formula as a sum for some, maybe possible, but I'm asking just to compute first two orders. So terms were e squared, e, e, e or e, e times e and stuff like this, and we get high terms. If you have small representations, then you cannot act by E more than two times. So for example, for representations like V and V star, V is a standard three-dimensional representation. We don't need high terms, they will vanish. So this uh, will become sufficient to compute this R matrix RVV and RVV star from this very definition. And the next question is to find eigenvalues of R2. R tilde VV. Uh, uh, you know, to speak about eigenvalues, uh, we uh, need operator which acts from the space to itself. But if this V and W are the both V, then it's okay. We have RVV. This uh, good question. Um, I wrote some hint, uh, which is some sort of apology if you want, because I didn't define what I wrote CC, I didn't define the action, and the action is uh, for E and F are standard one. We don't have to change any anything, they're just matrix units. Uh, uh, so it is easy to do computation. So then I wrote, as I said, that A is sufficient for B and C, such we don't have need to, take product of three operators E. And I don't know, I wrote answer in this form. So some co coefficients times matrix units, A and B times A, C, D, but this is just my, my way maybe, maybe you'll choose another. Mm. Any questions? Okay, let me look, look how we're going with time. So 50, uh, so more or less half of the lecture and we are on the slide number five or 15. Okay, so I should, maybe I will not cover all of my slides, but that means that I will give you less problems. Uh, okay, the next topic is a break. Or Lucy, maybe I should tell, uh, add uh, somewhere uh, uh, name Lucy.
Mm, no, no, break group is uh, not Lustig, it is just a general notion. Lustig defines the break group action as a quantum group. So, Lustig break group is a concrete representation of the Lustig. So, better to say Lustig representation of the break group, but I think people say it's in Russian as Lustig break group. So, I, but I just wrote surnames. So there's a famous mathematician, George Lustig. Uh, okay, so braid group is a group uh, which can be defined for any root system. It's a generator. Uh, generators Ti correspond to the elements of the uh, to the simple reflections, and this root set five braid relation, which means Ti, Tj, Ti, and so on, equal to Tj, Ti, and so on. Uh, where here we have Maj, which depends on Aj. And if we have simply less case, we just sufficient to know that if aj is equal to zero, then maj is equal to two. So si and sj, ti and tj commutes. And if aj is equal to one, minus one, and the opposite is also equal to minus one, then maj is equal to three, which is a braid relation as we have here. And uh, uh, the braid group is related to the while group. There is a homomorphism subjective. Uh, so the, we have this, it means that in while group we have this relation, but simple reflections also reflections. So CI SI square is equal to one. But for braid group, we don't have any such relation, just, just, just this uh, transformation. Okay, now Lustig defined the action of the uh, Bray group on the quantum group. Uh, we, you should think about this as a, some version of the action of the wild group on the universal development of Lie algebra. To be here also, there is some issue. So wild group does not act on like formal, not in general, does not act on the Lie algebra. Some slight extension of the wild group acts. Uh, the problem is the while group is not doesn't belong to the uh, uh, cartan uh, to the uh, to the group itself. It is usually defined as a quotient. Of, so anyway, there is some problem even for Q equal one, but for Q equal one, this is just some science, and for Q not equal one, this is not science. It will have elements of the infinite order. And that's all. So we have action. Honest action of the braid group. I don't know whether it's how to say this representation has kernel, but I don't know. I don't know the kernel. Maybe it is even unknown. Anyway, the formulas for the simple reflections are given here. They're not very, I mean, naive. I, I would say so. Something is. Is okay. So this part is a, just a reflection on the Cartan. So this uh, this is okay. This is so. If we want to reflect E, then we should get F. For, but for some reason we get not F but minus F with some Cartan bond. This doesn't affect our weight. So in terms of weight, we get just reflection. But we have to do this. Similar here. This is uh, a bit resembles formulas for antipod. I don't, maybe it can be written as some identity, but I didn't manage to do this. In antipod, we also have story like this. Well, e to minus f is some kappa. And the most interesting formulas are here. Uh, this resembles serial relation. And the difference is in serial relation, we have here not minus AJ, but Y minus AJ. So, so in serial relations, uh, 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 serial relations uh, in terms of a Q commutator, which I explained some, some time ago, uh, serial relations means that a Q commutator with the power one minus AJ is zero. And this is a previous Q commutator. 
to contagion power AJ, one, one less AJ. Mm. And maybe here should be, I'm not 100% sure, but maybe here should be minus, okay. Some factorial. I'm not certain sure, but I think this, yes, I think this is true. Mm. So, uh, so another way to think that uh, this we, can, we act not by EJ, but by its divided power. Here in the formula, I use this divided power. So, maybe you remember in formal in the serial relation, we have some sort of binomial coefficients here. Here we have nothing like this, but they're hidden, hidden in this uh, brackets. This in this brackets, E i r in brackets is not just E i in power of r, but divided by factorial. So if you uh, go from this brackets to ordinary, then you'll have factorials here, and uh, this factorial should be added by hands in order to have this Q commutation. Uh, and this also can be written using the adjoint action. Uh, for some reason, the delta is opposite. But... I think I spent more time discussing this last year and have had, uh, this was maybe the problem. Now I've just claimed this. And the trivial theorem by Lustig, oh, here we have, again, here Lustig, and I can check that I wrote correctly, uh, that f f first Ti is an automorphism of the algebra, and second, that TI, uh, this Ti TR satisfy uh, braid group relation. Any questions? The standard usage of the braid group that we can act by the braid group on the simple generators of the AI and obtain generators which will correspond to not simple but other roots, other roots. So we get some analogs of the uh, original way generators of the Lie algebra. Sometimes it's called Cartan Bale basis. Let, let us do this. Let's fix, uh, we have W0. Uh, by the way, who is still listening? Uh, who knows what is W0? Or maybe, no, who can guess what I denoted by W0? The same line is slower. Mm, not, not a word, so I would say that this is the longest element. Mm -hmm. Not, not the longest element in uh, what is my color here? Okay, it doesn't matter. In while group. Mm -hmm. uh, fix it, reduce it, uh, decomposition. So this is a product of simple reflection and this number and capital, this is actually number of uh, positive roots for our system phi. I don't have any notation for this number. I just pick big number and keep it. Uh, then we can uh, define this, uh, the following roots, beta one and so on beta n. So beta n is just the last, S alpha n, I n, beta n minus one is this and so on. Mm. The theorem is that this, these roots are all positive roots in some order, which is actually, which is so-called convex. The word convex means that if we have uh, beta gamma and beta plus gamma, all our roots, then beta plus gamma will be between beta and gamma. This is a 
minus this word convex, but I will not use it. I will not use this property explicitly. Uh, uh, more or less, I mean, you, you can think about this also as follows. So, uh, if you act by w zero, then w zero, then all positive roots becomes negative. The longest element is the element which maps. The, uh, oh, uh, length of the element is the number of positive roots, which it makes negative. And longest element makes do maximum plan, maximum what you can, uh, anybody can. It sends all positive roots to negative. And this is actually order in which it sends. So first of all, I x by S A1, A1. Then alpha I1 goes to negative. Then this element, first x by S I1, so it goes to this, and then the previous, and uh, it becomes negative, and so on. So all these roots, this is the order in which all roots becomes negative. So this is why uh, this set of all positive roots. And this also proves the convexity. So if beta and gamma at some point, beta and gamma becomes negative, then there's some is also negative, and so it's, it should be between beta and gamma. Okay, so using this, we one can define the uh, uh, so-called Cartan veil generators. So one of them is just the last. I wrote the formula like here, but uh, what's the difference? Instead of alpha, I wrote e. So instead of the root element, root, I wrote the corresponding root generator. And instead of s, I wrote for some reason t inverse. So, S is the same as S inverse, so I can wrote here S inverse as well, but I wrote T inverse. So define this element. Then there is theorem, von Kleberg of with property, uh, which I oh, again decompose into two parts. Part one is that, elem, that these elements are PBW, PBW generators. So their products form a basis in U plus. And B is a, is a color, corollary of the A and triangle decomposition which we had before. That any element of the U can be written as a product of F of F's, then K, then product of E's. Maybe I should note that the order E's is, here is the order which we choose, pick by uh, uh, reduced decomposition of the W0. So not so definition of this is depend on the order and order here also depends on the order of W. Uh, okay, so here I wrote the formula for the inverse just for some completeness or but to say for the problem which I'll give below. Um, but I want to say state another formula for the R matrix, which, which has many names. So maybe in Moscow it's usually called Haroshkin Tolstoy formula, but maybe it was written before in the uh, by Lewandowski Soibelman using somehow different approach. Haroshkin Tolstoy maybe stated for a fine case, but they and they did not study a fine case. So anyway. There is some story which here, uh, so this is the reason why I put so many names in the story, but the result is the following, that the universal matrix has the following decomposition. We have Cartan part, and then products of universal, uh, this is R parts, which I, I think in my notation, they should be with bar, all, which correspond to simple roots. And uh, no, not simple uh, to all roots, and term which correspond to any given root, say beta k, is this is it just a term which we had for SL two. So we have product e times f, and some power n, and this factor which we had for SL two, which came from the from the pairing between the corresponding elements. 
То есть, чтобы получить обычную матрицу, нам нужно еще, еще раз на RH бар домножить. Или там бар лишний. Ну, 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 здесь бар For example, for SL2, for SL2, this is known before, even for drink filter, maybe, because for SL2 we don't have such decomposition, we have one R bar and one R H, uh, as we had, as we had, I don't know where, as we had here. So here I can now write this uh, alpha if you want, because we have only one or beta or any other Greek letters. So I choose it. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, okay, we are here. Here, I mean, there's quite a lot of stuff. Uh, I suggest you a problem uh, to do, to, I mean, to, to follow the definitions and compute, uh, do the computation for SL3. And actually, I mean, in order to, to understand, to, for you, to help you to check that everything is, uh, agrees with something, uh, to do the same computation as you did before for the uh, compute R bar in first and second order. Second order and end of. So in the problem which was given above, uh, I asked you to compute this first and second order using just definition of the pairing, dual base and stuff like that. And here, the definition of the this uh, formula by Harushkin, uh, Tolstoy, and us. I'm not claiming that any their computation. I think of the same level of difficulty. So it doesn't help much. And uh, if you, I don't know, maybe for higher orders than 100, it will be of course Lindorsky Tolstoy formula. I mean, this formula will be better. But for this second order, it doesn't matter. Uh, maybe even this computation is harder because you need to follow many notations. This braid, mainly this braid group action. For the, and for this computation, you will need this formula for T inverse, which I wrote here. They are almost the same as we have for T, but somewhere where another sign and stuff like that. Mm. Okay. I suspect that some sign is wrong. I would double check it. Or maybe you will. Okay. Uh, now, one uh, slide for about representations of the quantum group. Uh, First of all, let me say that there is some small difficulty with representation, uh, difficulty with signs. In the quantum group, which I defined uh, today, there, is a, uh, there are automorphisms, which are labeled by the maps from uh, sigma, from Q to, plus, to the group, which consists of plus minus one, so practically for any simple root, we choose some sign plus or minus. And then we can, uh, there is an automorphism which maps EI to, my, to EI up to the sign, the same with K and F to itself. And you can take any fine dimensional representation twisted by this automorphism. Mm. Uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes people speak about quantum groups uh, not uh, in this manner, but as the formal algebras. So instead of K, you have generator H, and K is the, is the formal exponent. In this case, you don't have such automorphism. You cannot you cannot change H in such way that this K changes the sign. 
but for uh, for quantum group which I define sorts E and F and K, there is such orthography, and that means that for any any finite dimensional representation, you can twist by this. For example, you can twist a very uh, one dimensional representation which is defined by co, co unit in which epsilon f x by zero. You can twist uh, so k will x by the corresponding sign, and you can take any representation, take tensor product with this one dimension. Then any finite dimensional representation is decomposed to the sum of the terms uh, which correspond to the such sigmas. And the difference between terms is different, can be seen in action of case. So in stand, in the representation which had direct analogs of the representation of the just of the of, of the Lie algebra, k will x by some power of q, power of q. And if we twist by sigma, it will be some power power of q times sine sign. Mm. Uh, usually, people consider only some block in the category of representations. So, which I could know representation of type one it means that we don't have such sign. So, k x by some power of q. And the theorem that this, cate this uh, category of representation as a abelian category is equivalent to just representation of the algebra G. And if you take uh, any other type, so representation of the choose any orthography and representation type sigma, then it will be the same as choosing this type one representations. So fine, at least finite dimensional representation, punchlines, at least the finite dimensional representations of the quantum groups uh, behave like the representation of the original Lie algebra up to uh, this issue with science. Uh, yes, yes, yes. This is about finite dimension. In infinite dimension, there are some, if I remember, there are some stories, some, some, some uh, sets of representation which do not have a good analog for Q goes to one and so on. Uh, Actually, this is somehow similar to this uh, sign issue. The fact that we don't have good limit means that Q Thompson is not going to one, we should go to one. Okay, and the last remark is about uh, the fact that we don't have this issue when we speak about algebra as a formal algebra. So actually last year we talked about algebra as a formal algebra and here, we can use the fact that there is no rep representation of the universe of the universal help of the help algebra in associative algebra. So uh, uh, this theory should be the same. And this corresponds to type one. Okay. Uh, this is just for completeness. And and are there any questions before I move on to the next topic? I also have, I still have two topics which I plan to cover. Do you hear me now? Yeah, okay, but uh, 
Uh, but we lost the okay. Mm, uh, no, I hope now everything's okay. Maybe somebody can check that everything's okay with uh, YouTube. But mm, and I will proceed uh, about center. Uh, I define uh, the, the um, so first I have to define quantum trace. So for any finite dimensional model V, we have operator which I should denote by F V, not F M, and I do this. Uh, which is, uh, which is the trace uh, multiplied by Q power two rho. Q, uh, K is with index two, two rho. I recall that if K with index in uh, some lattice means that I take the correspond uh, root lattice correspond to rho, it is a uh, half sum of the all roots or some of the sum of, uh, some of, of, uh, of the weights. Uh, and decompose to the simple roots and take the corresponding product of the key elements. Okay. Uh, in, now, in principle, this belongs to, ah, no, no, the two row is just the sum of all roots, all positive roots. Uh, so, uh, this, this is some product of key eyes. Uh, this fun function is uh, uh, so for uh, possess some analog of the standard property of the trace. The property is the following. Uh, this uh, possess this property. So not under f of x, y is equal to y, x, but instead of x, we have antipod here, square of the antipod. Uh, the property is straightforward and, uh, uh, and the proof explained why we put here k to rho, uh, because the square of, for our quantum group, the square of the antipod is a conjugation by this element k to rho. So this is also proof. And the Dinfeld-Stichen construction uh, uh, is the following. So we take any finite dimensional representation, take product of R matrix and R matrix to one, so with permuted arguments, and apply this. So, so we have, this is element of U tensor U. Uh, I apply functional to the second component, then I obtain element of the U. And this theorem says this, this is the central element. So for, I mean, in classical case, we have some analog of the dual construction. So if we have a representation, then we can define a function on the group, for example, which is a trace on this representation. This is element of the, this is a function on the group. But somehow the functions of the function of the quantum group is different, uh, hope for algebra, different quantum groups, not quantum universal value. But there is a, some sort of embedding of which respects the joint action and so on. So, so anyways, this is a, uh, in the quantum case, we have in the pure form case, we have this construction. For any representation, we can construct the central element. And this is actually homomorphism from the K theory, K group to the center, and more or less isomorphic. So this was homomorphism means that if we take direct sum of two representations, V1 and V2, then it, the, we'll get the sum of the corresponding central elements. And this is more or less obvious. And what is less obvious that if you take tensor product of two representations, 
then the correspondent C will be the product of the correspondent of this. Then CV will equal to the product C1, CV1, CV2. If we start. I don't know, this is a good problem, but I didn't put it as a problem. Uh, it is solved in my lecture notes last year. Uh, but if you want to understand this better, I highly recommend this problem and I solve it or look to my solution. Maybe you'll find a mistake in my solution. It's also a bit good. As a problem, I suggest you to compute this for V and V prime. Mm -hmm. No, no, find the formula. No, no, no. Find the formula. So for any representation, you'll have central element. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow, this, uh, so you should have two central elements. I mean, you can try to compare this with a story which you you know some you, you know something about center of the SL three of the universal development of the SL three. We for, for even for GL three we know that we can construct uh, some casimir uh, some casimirs. It will be linear casimir, quadratic casimir, cubic casimir. They will generate everything. Uh, for, for SL three we don't have linear casimir. We have quadratic and cubic. But here it is a bit, in quantum case, we have stories a bit different. We have two fundamental representations and they are more or less equivalent. We don't have this, you mean quadratic and cubic isomers. It's hard to believe that they're equivalent. They are completely different. And here we'll have generators which are symmetric. So even there is a obvious symmetry which permutes them. There's a symmetry which permutes uh, uh, simple roots, external outer. Вы опять пропали с камеры у меня, во всяком случае. Да. Да, да, сейчас слышно. То есть нужно найти CV и CV со звездочкой и доказать, что это все элементы, все центральные элементы в УКО. No, no, I'm just asking to compute them. Ah, okay. Even compute them. Maybe if it would be interesting to, to look to their, to their classical limits. Mm -hmm. А доказать, что это все, это сложно или это наоборот очевидно? You need to have some sort of harsh Chandra theory. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Let me add about classical limit. Mm. Uh, there is some uh, issue here that uh, I mean, I try to compute them and uh, face as a problem which I wanted to uh, warn you. Um, uh, about that uh, if you take the formula for the R matrix, then there is this R I R H type uh, term, which is, I forgot where it is written. It is written somewhere, somewhere here, this is it. So you can pick H's as a root and this are weights but uh, or opposite, but weights do not belong to the root lattice in general. So it will, uh, this formulas will contain roots of Ks. So the obtained elements do not belong actually to the quantum group which I defined above, but to the small extension where instead of root lattice, we have weight lattice. There is such extension. If you work, if you worked formally as a, uh, a series of H bars, then maybe it was will be even honest. But yes, and what happens with this uh, uh, automorphism uh, sigma? Sigma. Consider uh, 
uh, all those minus ones. Uh, um, when, uh, well, uh, I mean, if you consider th that version of the quantum group, then sigma should map from P to the plus minus one and we'll have such automorphisms. And uh, um, so we have another set of the uh, automorphisms. This, uh, this, uh, uh, so we have this problem, but uh, it will be uh, how to say. So, for example, for SL2, uh, here we add, if we add the square root of k, then we don't have uh, such automorphism, but we'll have automorphism which map k to the. Uh, yes, which, which will map square root of k to minus square root of k. Ah, I see. Thanks. So we'll have another sigma. And, and for SL3, maybe and not, nothing changed because uh, any such choice of signs for uh, weight latest will lead to some choice of sign for root latest. This issue about sign is actually essential about this. The school was about the center. So uh, the uh, description of the center is classical up to such sort of side issues. Uh, okay. Uh, are there any more questions? If you uh, saw something about our uh, chain. Uh, about the lattice models like XXZ, this should remember your construction of the transfer matrix R times R and then some trace with respect to one space. Well, actually, this construction is, is this not coincidence, of course. So this construction is natural from this point. Of view. Okay, and the last topic for the last, I don't know, say. 10 minutes. I don't know. We started at. Uh, I can look at the, uh, the YouTube how long uh, is the video. My, I hope I can look. It's 72 minutes, so I have 18 minutes. <laughs> at least I think so. Uh, it will be sufficient for the, I don't know, four slides. Five slides about artificial uh, realization. Uh, I will talk about artificial realization only for GLN case. There are story about other classical types, but I ignore it. At least, at least today, and maybe it is sufficient. So, uh, uh, for uh, here, R, I use I wrote this R a bit different from I wrote before. So. Uh, uh, our universal R will roll to with some with another head. Шляпка другая. This Moscow R and this is just R, but no, it's visible. So here R is a some finite dimensional matrix, and uh, for G, in our case, it will be n squared times n squared matrix, and uh, R. And this is a formula for it. So we have summation of uh, all these numbers, i and j run from one to n. Here i not equal to j, here i less than j, and here for i die. So we have some uh, matrix of size n square times n square, and we define the uh, Hopf algebra, which is generated by uh, generators L plus and L minus. So we have a lot of generators, um, like n squared generators, much more than we had in the story uh, when we had before for uh, uh, the definition. But more, uh, but as an advantage, we have more simple relations. Relation for diagonal part will be just at L plus times L minus equal to one, and Looking forward, on the, just in the next slide, this L plus will be just case, which we have before. On the diagonal Ls will be just case. And the relation for all other Ls will be just, will be these R relations. So R L plus, 
R L minus and also one relation which interchanges L plus and L minus. So if we interchange one to interchange else, then we have a matrix. The algebra has a co-product, it has antipod, it has co-unit, so everything is okay. Uh, Okay, uh, when I uh, write this relation, so this is a relation of the matrix of sine sin squared times sin squared with values in the, this algebra, U and R. So this is actually N squared relations. R is itself matrix of sine sin squared times sin squared. And this uh, L1, L plus is a matrix of size N times N. So I make the matrix of which acts on the N squared and sin squared space. Uh, but via this convention. And the same for L2, similar for L2. So this is a n squared n power four, uh, a set of n power four quadratic relations. The same here, the same here. Okay, so this is a RTT definition uh, for this. Uh, uh, algebra and the theorem is that this algebra U of R is isomorphic to quantum group, which I defined before, uh, up to some uh, fact that the, which should, it will be another coproduct, not delta, but delta opposite. And also up to the fact that uh, here we have not S on by GLM. In principle, I can add before that the term determinant is equal to one and it will be S on, but. And I wrote in terms of JLN, so difference between SLN and JLN that now we have a case, uh, not one K, but uh, not N minus one K, but N, one more K. And in relations everywhere which before I had KI, and now I write KI, KI plus one inverse. This is a standard expression of the simple root alpha I in terms of the basis of the Cartan for JLM, epsilon I minus epsilon I plus one. And here are the formulas which are different from the uh, SLN case. Serial relations are the same. Uh, Are there any questions? This one more realization, which is useful. And, and uh, okay, I, of course, I'm not going to prove, I mean, I'm not going to prove today anything. Uh, I recall some part of the proof, um, uh, which is, um, which had an idea inside, which I uh, think was very nice. There is, uh, this part is the construction of the homomorphism from one algebra to another, and it can be spelled in two either in formula. So that actually L plus uh, is, a, how to say, so the, in, in the, L plus can be uh, decomposed to the product of the diagonal matrix and matrix with ones on the diagonal. Uh, this is because the diagonal elements of the L plus are invertible. This is written here. So we can divide on them. And uh, here we'll have ones and on the upper diagonal we'll have just Fs uh, generated which correspond to simple roots. And the same for L minus, and here we have E's. Again, generates which correspond to simple roots and uh, with a factor, which we actually mentioned above. So here we'll have Q minus Q inverse, and here up to sign the same. And this, this formula can be obtained from the universal R matrix by applying from one, on one leg we apply uh, standard and dimensional representation, and another like we apply identity. So we get a matrix of the times n times n dimension of this representation with the values of the universal of the now 
quantum group. And this is homomorphism. And we have two such maps. We have uh, all uh, the, the matrix will be in one case upper triangle and in the other case low triangle because our matrix uh, belongs to the product of the barrel and another barrel part. Uh, I don't know, can I, what else can I add here? Uh, I hope. Mm. Okay, I wanted to add some comments about the proof, but maybe this is not necessary. Uh, I, uh, as a problem I mean, to, to work with uh, this RLA relation, uh, I asked you to compute uh, this everything for SL3 and uh, show that the, uh, actually what we get here, so mainly here, is the uh, same as what we get in the story of the Cartan value basis. So if you think about classical types, SLM, you in principle can more or less ignore the story about elliptic uh, group and cartan wheel basis and think about these generators which you have in RLL relation. And I, for SL3 and also for SLN, but here I put star because it is already too many problems. And there are some hints. I mean, one page hint how to solve this which I maybe skip now uh, and ask, are there any questions? Yeah. Okay, is there are no, да, yes. А ты эти лекции выложишь потом на свою страницу? Slides will be on the website, and uh, also I, I hope because the recording will be also on the YouTube. Yes, mm. and but uh, and this problem also was given on this my very last lecture of last year course. But uh, since I mean nobody at the time had time to look at this, including me. So I use the opportunity of the new course to give the problem which was not discussed completely last year. This is an easy way to find new problems. Uh, okay, here I have one more problem. Uh, uh, it says, which is about the following. So, when I define this uh, algebra, we have uh, three R, two R relations between R and L plus and L minus. So L plus you can think about as a, as a quantum barrel. L minus is a, another quantum barrel. And this is relation between the B plus and B minus. And such relation actually comes from the Greenfield double construction. This is one more piece of the knowledge which I deserves a separate lecture. So the fact that we have this universal matrix is follows from the fact that this is Dreamfield double. It is, it, for example, if you take the, just the quantum barrel algebra, then you don't have this universal matrix. So this Dreamfield double construction is a way, maybe the only way to produce uh, good quantum groups, quantum groups, which are not just copology, but also have a matrix. And in this different double construction, which it starts, starts from the pairing, which we observed above. And uh, above, I said that how to use the pairing to construct a matrix, but actually the story, there is a previous step, which I somehow omitted, that uh, uses the pairing to construct the whole quantum group. So we know, which is as, as an algebra, we know how to uh, multiply a minus with a minus, a plus with a plus. We know how to take a product, it doesn't change. And if you want to multiply some a minus and a plus, then the formula is this. Mm. 
I don't know, maybe it's too late to explain something, uh, but uh, here I use a Swidler notation if it helps somebody. Uh, and, and I want to say that you can view of the, think about this RTT realization as also some version of the Greenfield double. So you start from L plus Y, L plus, say, L plus and L minus, and define the pairing uh, by this formula. And then this uh, Greenfield double formula will lead you to uh, uh, relation which, uh, which permute, how to permute a plus L minus, which is just RLL relation. Uh, problem which I add here is the following that is to check that this definition is uh, is well defined because for L plus you have relations, RLL relation. And uh, you have to ch check that this for such pairing, uh, the pairing between this and anything, say L minus, is zero. And this is computation, and actually, this is due to Young Baxter property of the R. Uh, okay, and this is the last slide, and I think. Uh, I can stop for questions. Uh, sorry, uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I want to ask uh, from the lecture two. Uh, uh, the first several the first several lectures uh, were follow Cherry's book or not? Mm. Mm, no, no, we don't. I mean, Cherry's book. There's almost nothing about a fine quantum group. Just I don't know, twenty pages. We will not follow Cherry's book. And in the lecture two, but uh, lecture two will don't have. We will not have quantum groups, it will be just about uh, a finely algebra. Uh, so, I guess. Oh. Oh, okay. But Cherry, uh, I highly recommend Cherry book anyway, Cherry special book. Is, so, I will not complete, uh, I will not follow it, but I use it as a, one of the reference. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, another question. Uh, uh, the Dreamfield double uh, have a fine case. Uh, if you feel table uh, uh, have affine quantum groups, mm, affine quantum groups can be defined as a different double. We will talk about this. We didn't oh, oh. talk about affine quantum groups, at least in the, <laughs> after the first slide with the title. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Okay, if there is no more questions, I stop.